Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We are here for another Monday Moments in Time. Today is April 4th, 2022, and the title of our message tonight, albeit a little different, is it fun being naked? Uh, so I don't want you to take that literally, but I do want you to take it spiritually. So we have a lot to cover tonight. I bless all of you in Jesus' name for being here, for allowing uh, First Lady Victoria and, and us to, to join you in your home or in your office, in your car, wherever you are. So let's just do what we do and let's open it up uh, in prayer. Father, Lord, I thank you that you always hear us when we pray. Lord, I thank you for this message tonight. I thank you for even having the ability to deliver a message like this. Lord, I pray over this teaching. I pray over, I pray over every household represented. Lord, use me tonight and speak through me. All of you, Jesus, and none of me. Lord, get the glory out of this teaching tonight. And as always, Lord, take it over. Change it. Stop it. Cut it, whatever you want to do, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Okay, so is it fun being naked? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, let's see who we have here. Oh, we got First Lady here always. Praise God. Hello, First Lady. And we've got First Lady's mom, my mother-in-law. All right, Sister Alice. Good to have you here as well. So let's get started. Is it fun being naked? Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of bring up a message. Uh, the body of Christ was never meant to be for perfect people. Uh, that's why we need a savior. I just want to address something right now because I, like you, I have a lot of uh, social media uh, platforms that I follow and read and things like that. And without going into details with, with different documentaries that are out right now, I do want to say two things. Number one, there has always been an attack against the church, against the body of Christ. Uh, if Christ himself was under attack, what makes you think that the church of Jesus Christ won't be under attack? I don't condone anyone doing wrong. And I don't condone any church representing Christ to do wrong uh, as well. But I want those of you who are listening to me to really understand the body of Christ is filled with flawed people, and I don't want anyone to think that when you join a church, everyone is going to be perfect. The body of Christ is full of flaws. And, you know, I look at some churches and, and I, I want more of the body of Christ to come out <clears throat> and to show people, hey, you know what? We are just as flawed as anybody else. That's why we need a savior. So you've seen the same documentaries, I'm sure, that, that I've seen and, and people are talking about. And, and I, I pray for these churches. I pray for these ministries, these ministers, these congregations. But when you talk to people who are not born again, you just remind them, hey, the church is made up of flawed people. <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind. Hey, Sister Willa, good evening. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, my cousin Ken is on here. All right. So I just wanted to put that you know, out there. And I may talk more about it uh, some other time, but I really wanted to kind of speak on that. Uh, and yes, some of you do notice I am pulling for Kansas tonight. So I'm hoping that uh, Abaji and McCormick and uh, Martin can pull it off tonight. But hey, Caleb Love, uh, he, he's he got uh, him and uh, Armando Bacot, Bacot, I think it is. If Bacot is healthy, it's going to be a good good game tonight. So, but yes, uh, Sister Willa uh, is pulling for Kansas like I know she is, and I'm pulling right right there with you, Sister Willa. <laughs> so, what does it mean to be naked? Let's let's talk about that. All right. So, nakedness is defined as to be completely uncovered, nothing hidden, fully exposed, showing an openness for all to look upon. It sometimes means that you're vulnerable to outward conditions and or elements otherwise protected against. So keep that in mind. That's the definition of naked. To be born again and walking with Jesus, but being partially naked 
and afraid and angry and hurt. This is where some people are. They're born again. They're walking with Jesus, but they're partially naked. They're uncovered and they're open to all type of elements. And these people are, they're afraid. And this represents the body of Christ. Many of us are afraid. We're angry. We're hurt. And how is that, that you can walk with Christ and be those things because you're partially naked? Now, many of you have heard this teaching before, and I show this particular photo because what you're looking at is a photo of an armor. And many of you are familiar with Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 12. Put on the whole armor of God. You know, the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. And what I wanted to do tonight, I wanted to change it up just a little bit because I don't know about you, but when I'm thinking about what I'm going through and there are some days I am hurt, some days I am angry, some days that I'm just out here like anybody else and I'm afraid, I've got fear, different things. I don't picture this. I can't, I can't um, grasp you know, wearing body armor like that. It just doesn't resonate with me. So what I wanted to do was change it up a little bit. And for me, when I think about going through situations, this is what I look at. When I'm hurt, when I'm angry, when I'm afraid, this is what the body of Christ is looking like when gas prices are going higher, when you have to decide on, you know, if you are going to even buy certain food, are you going to fill up the car this time? How are you going to pay your rent? You know, the mortgages do. Do you pay half of it and then get a half a tank of gas? Or do you pay all the mortgage and you don't get any gas? You know, I just don't, um, I, 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 I don't, I guess you could say it's not agree. I'm just not there seeing somebody in armor. But these tears people having their hands folded, wondering where are we going to get our money from? Where are we going to get money to pay the bills? What are we going to do? That is what I want to bring out today and having you not to be naked, but looking at Ephesians 6, 10 through, I think it's 15, understanding how you can be clothed in God. You look at something like this and you see this picture of this young lady and you see somebody who is probably broken, somebody who's weak. You know, the things that have happened to me, I told First Lady, I'll never tell somebody, stop crying, be strong. That no longer makes sense to me because a lot of times being strong in the Lord and in his power, not yours, being strong can mean a whole lot of things. Being strong can mean crying and just letting it out. You know, there were things I went through and I had to just let it out. I'll never tell a man anymore. Come on, stop all that crying. No, sometimes being strong does mean crying and letting it out. Sometimes being strong does mean walking away. You know, you, somebody comes up to you and they want to rob you or they want to confront you to fight you or intimidate you. It's the weak person that wants to just show their strength by resorting to violence. But it takes more strength to walk away. So when you hear that verse, be strong in the Lord, in his mighty power, not yours, be strong in his mighty power. Sometimes being strong means walking away. Sometimes being strong means not saying anything, just holding your peace. That takes strength. I have to work on that with me. Sometimes forgiving the unforgivable. I've had to forgive certain people and situations and, you know, I'm the Lord is still working on me. And that is one thing, you know, not so much forgiving, but First Lady can tell you, walking away, not saying anything. This particular teaching I want to tell you right now, I'm right there where you are. I'm delivering this message. The Lord helped me to create it and present it, but if I were recording this message and putting it on a, a tape or a CD, I'd be playing it too. I'm right here with you guys. This message is talking to me too. Finally, depending on Jesus for what you're trying to get on your own. That's what being strong means as well. 
when you just finally give up and just say, Lord, I, I can't, I, I give up. I'm going to have to lean on you like I should be doing anyway, because Jesus wants you to fully depend on him, allowing yourself to be open and honest or vulnerable. Yeah, I'm showing a black man and, and a, a black woman crying. And it's not always going to be something that's, that's strong that shows up when either you're black, you're white, you're Hispanic, you're Asian, no matter what. I'm showing this to you, just showing I represent black men. First lady represents black women. And yeah, we cry. We have issues. But how do you get strong? How do you be strong? How do you do this? How in the world do you be strong in the Lord and in his power? How do you do that? The verse says to put on all of God's armor. Now, he didn't put on your armor, but the Bible says to put on all of God's armor. That's how you can be strong. And what I'm getting at is in order for you sometimes to walk away, in order for you not to say anything, in order for you to forgive the unforgivable, in order for you to understand times are going to be hard for the world, but we are going to be taken care of. How do you accept that? How do you walk around with that type of faith knowing, Tony, there's not a gas price for Christians and non-Christians. When I go to the pump, and out here in LA, and it is six nineteen per gallon. They're not saying, "Oh, that's for the world." But hey, you a preacher, you're the body of Christ. I'm gonna knock that down to two dollars. No, I'm paying the same amount of gas per gallon that the world is paying. Only difference is I have to have that shield of faith, knowing, Lord, I'm going to be able to get the gas that I need. And one thing I want to bring up to you guys: don't be afraid if you feel the Lord testing you to ask you or to urge you to help pay for somebody's gas. That might sound crazy. And you might be thinking, Tony, there's no, I'm at the gas station, barely making it on my own. And somebody in front of me in, in the line, their car just got declined and they're asking them, please try it again. Try it again. Let me try to find another card. And that's when you get that tap on your shoulder and the Lord is saying, just give them $10. Tell them to put $10 on your card. Tell them to put $20 on, on, on your card. You will get so much out of it. And you, you, you might think at first, I won't have enough. But believe me, you will. True story. First lady and I went to a gas station and we had to put gas in her car. And I'm not kidding you. I, you know, I'm not. We are trying to make it like everybody else. Okay. But this young man disabled and and again this whole thing could look like a, a scam but i made sure it wasn't this young man came up to me disabled asked me can you help us we're kind of stuck trying to get gas in our camper and I, I i said what gas in your what gas in our camper these people had an rv at the gas station i'm not talking about those little RV. i'm talking about it was an old broken down beat up RV that was huge and he was walking around trying to get somebody to give him money and this woman who appeared to be his mother was walking around trying to get people to give her money and you know this was uh, during COVID so you had to wear a mask the mother and the son didn't have a mask the mother had what looked to be a torn t-shirt that she had as a mask and her son had what appeared to be the other half of the t-shirt as a mask very dirty and I'll just tell you, I, at the prompting of the Lord, I went over there. First lady, I told her to watch me just to make sure, you know, watch my back. I went over there and I said, look, why don't you allow me to put some gas in this vehicle to get you going in Jesus name? And the mother stopped asking other people and came over there and was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And she kept thanking me. And I said, it's OK. And I'm letting the pump go and go and go. And you can see she was getting uncomfortable, you know, because she's watching the pump, looking at me, waiting for me to shut it off. And I don't know if you've ever if you guys have paid via a credit card at a gas pump. But when you do that 
and you don't give it a certain amount, it just keeps going, but it does stop automatically at $75. This is not trying to get you to, to look at me. You know, it's all about Jesus. She could not believe I put $75 in her tank. And I asked her, do you want me to keep going? She said, no, oh my God, no, no, that's, that's perfect. That's more than what we need. And her and her son got back in this RV and took off. And people were looking at me and at them. And me and First Lady just started praying for them, kind of broke down a little bit and blessed them. And yeah, we've had blessings ever since then. Just be on the lookout in case the Lord wants to use you like that as well. So again, how can you overcome these evil days that we're in, no matter what the circumstance? Put on all, not part of it, all of God's armor, his armor, so you can stand firm against what? All the strategies of the devil. If you're partially covered, you won't be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. So put on all of God's armor. I want to read this to you. New York Times bestseller book. This book had over 40 million copies sold. The number one most influential business book of the 20th century, one of the most inspiring and impactful books ever written, has captivated readers for nearly three decades. This book has transformed the lives of presidents and CEOs, educators and parents, millions of people of all ages and occupations. You might be thinking, that must be the Bible. My God. And I wish it was. This is the book they're talking about. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, written by Stephen Covey. Uh, Covey. Now, I have no problem with this book. Some of you may have this book. Um, some of you may have uh, read this book. I have no problem with this book. I just wish that we could see that the Bible has changed, transformed millions of people's lives, and that we could have, and I know that the Bible has, but I would love for it to be written up just like this book is. So I had to think, Lord, if the world, and I'm not saying only worldly people are reading this book, but if, if these people have seven habits of highly effective people, then Lord, surely what are the seven quote unquote habits of highly anointed people? What could they be? Because, you know, if, if business people are, are, are being transformed by seven habits, my God, you would think that the, the people of God, the body of Christ would be transformed, you know, by seven habits. And this is why he took me to Ephesians. He says, number one, truth. You have to wrap truth tightly around us. Now, this is one word, and, and my cousin Kenny and I have talked about this many times. What is under attack right now? The idea of truth. Well, that's your truth. Well, that's my truth. Well, there's alternative facts. There is a war against truth. The first thing you have to have in this world in order to be clothed and not naked is have truth tightly wrapped around you. That should be the thing that holds up everything. It, it holds up your pants. It holds up your skirt. It holds down your shirt. Without truth, you're naked. You can be as good, a goody two shoes all you want to, but if you're not walking around in truth, you are completely naked. So have truth, number one. Number two, the second habit of highly anointed people, righteous living righteous living. And again, it's progress, not perfection. There is nobody perfect but Jesus Christ. Nobody perfect but him. And I know sometimes people, they look to the church for perfect people. There is no perfect church. There are no perfect pastors. I'm not perfect. First Lady Victoria is not perfect. If you join, if any of you join a perfect church, that church is now no longer perfect. Not <laughs> talking about you, but just saying we have to stop letting people think that the church is a body of people who are perfect. Don't commit any more sins. We are just fine. We're all walking around like doves. We only wear white every single day. Our feet never touch the ground because when somebody in the church will mess up, the world says, uh-huh, see, there's them church people. I knew, I knew they were all fake. And it's like, no, they're not fake. They're people. The difference between you and them is they're born again and you're not. But we make sometimes the same mistakes. Hopefully not all, you know, but the church does make mistakes. So that's the second habit of highly anointed people, righteous living. 
walk in the peace of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go so you don't stumble and get hurt. That's the third habit. Walk in peace. But walk in peace how? Of the gospel of Jesus. The Bible was very clear and detailed and deliberate when it said, walk in the peace of the gospel. Because you got people who deny that Jesus is the son of God and they walk in complete peace. And that's that's worldly peace. That's not spiritual peace. That's not true peace. So, you know, not again, I'm not knocking anybody who who has their own thinking and their own mindset of, of peace, but I'm talking to the body of Christ. If you want the third habit of highly anointed people, walk in the peace of the gospel. And Tony, how do you do that? That means everywhere you walk, you stand on the word of God. What does that mean? That means when you want to deliberately do something, if you go to the, and I'm just bringing up gas, because that must be, it, it, it's on my mind. So there may be somebody out here who either one of you or one of you have to talk, to, somebody has to talk to somebody about gas. But whenever you get to the gas station and you're looking at your wallet, your bank account and the gas tank, you find a verse in the Bible. For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28, you know, find a verse and you stand on that verse and say, Lord, according to your word, and you speak that word over your situation. That's how you walk in peace. If you want that job, if you want that certain degree, if you want that certain house, whatever you want, you have to find a verse and stand on it. That's how you walk in the peace of the gospel. The fourth habit, protect your heart from fear and worry with faith as your shield. You know, fear and worry don't come from your mind. It comes from your heart. But if you have a shield, something that blocks it, and that's your faith, that's how you protect your heart from letting fear and worry get into your heart. And then out of your uh, heart, out of your mouth flows the issues, okay? This is what flows out of your mouth because it's in your heart. I love how the, the uh, New Living Translation talks about that. Thank you, Sister Willa. God bless you. Yes. The fifth habit of highly anointed people, remember you are born again and full of salvation. So don't lose your mind over anything. This is where I had to have a... Um, my, my mother in the gospel, Sister Iris Love, had to talk to me. I was going through a, a very hard situation, and it wasn't too long ago, and I'm saying, hey, pray for me, pray for Victoria, pray for all of us, you know, and, and she said that, that the Lord showed her that the devil was trying to come after me for what I'm doing, which means this, this teaching, this Monday Moments in Time must really be irking the devil. Because she said she saw in the spirit that the devil was trying to come after my mind. And she said, don't try to lose your mind. He's after your mind. And that's when the Lord began to show me this verse that the helmet of salvation, you have to know that you know that you are not only born again, but that you are in your right mind. And the devil cannot take it. When it comes to a, a, a born again, tongue talking believer in Jesus Christ, the devil cannot make you lose your mind. But what he can, he can plant that seed and have you thinking that you're losing your mind. Then that's when you will start to say and do things. I must be losing my mind. Don't say that because you're death and life in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Watch what you say. The sixth habit of the highly anointed people, when in doubt, bring the Bible out to fight against everything coming against you. You have to have that word of God as your sword. That's your weapon of choice. That's what you have to have. When in doubt, bring that Bible out. Whatever you need, that's the sixth habit. And, and one of the most important ones, because you can't do this alone. Everything has instructions, and our instructions is in the Bible. The seventh habit of highly anointed people who don't want to walk around naked, the Bible says pray every day and during the day. Pray for yourself and other Christians. Sometimes that's where we miss it because we pray God bless us for and no more, but we have to pray for other Christians. And do you know, I may have said this before, 
But do you know that as you're praying and you start praying for somebody else, have you ever noticed, those of you that do this, that the Lord will seem like he'll show you other people and you'll start praying for this relative and then you'll 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 see this other relative and then he'll give you the name of somebody. Then you, you're praying for this friend. Then you're praying for this colleague and you're praying for this co-worker. Then you're praying for this fellow student. Then you're praying for this patient and then you're praying. It's like, my God. And sometimes you want to hurry and get done and like, Lord, I don't send me no more. But that's what you have to do to stay clothed. You don't want to walk around naked. That's how we do this. And you see, these seven habits of highly anointed people wrap truth tightly around us. Righteous living, again, progress, not perfection. We will never be perfect until, the, let me just tell you, we will become perfect the very day, millisecond, we finally cast our eyes upon Jesus because we're going to walk in perfection just like he is. So even though our bodies are not perfect, our spirit man, is what is perfect right now. Walk in the peace of the gospel of Jesus everywhere you go. Otherwise, you could stumble and fall and get hurt. Protect your heart from fear and worry. Remember, you're born again, full of salvation, so don't lose that mind over anything. And When in doubt, bring the Bible out to fight against anything coming against you and pray every day and during the day for yourself and other Christians. Those are the seven habits of highly anointed people. Our real enemy is not anyone or anything that we can see with our own eyes. Now, without knowing this, we fail. Tony, what do you mean? Everybody you see, just picture somebody right now you have a problem with. Someone who you really don't get along with. Someone who you know hates you. That's not the real enemy. The real enemy is the one you can't see. And where am I getting all of this from? Ephesians 6. Now you know it. Let's read it together. A final word, Paul says. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, uh uh, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. That does not name anybody in Phoenix, Arizona. That does not name anybody in Chicago, Illinois. That does not name anybody in L.A., California. That does not mention anybody in Mount Olive, Mississippi, Atlanta, Georgia, Tallahassee, Florida. That doesn't mention it. Our true enemy is in the heavenly realm. The demons that are being controlled by the devil who are controlling the people who live in Illinois and Arizona and Mississippi and Florida. Then he goes on and says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy, not these people, but resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll still be standing firm, bless God. So stand your ground, putting on the belt. There you go, the belt of truth. There's truth, the belt of truth. And the body armor of God's righteousness. For your shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, the gospel, so you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop those fiery arrows of the devil. Again, there's that fear and worry. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. If you do that, the seven habits of highly anointed people, you are not going to be naked. You are going to be fully clothed at all times. Now, did you know that we have got help like this? Let me show you the kind of help that we have, okay? We have help like this. Did you know that snake venom is deadly? With as many as 100,000 people worldwide dying each year from snake bites. 
The venom from a snake is made up of several hundred proteins, which all have a different effect on the human body. Two main ways snakes make us suffer. They do it by attacking the circulatory system, the blood, or the nervous system. This is what snakes do, okay? It's in the blood. When the Lord showed me this, I broke down. And this is how I'm going to end the teaching tonight. It's in the blood. Did you know Crofab? Is a purified product approved by the FDA back in the year 2000. It is the only USA approved anti-venom for pit vipers, rattlesnake, copperhead, and water moccasin snake bites. So what does that mean? Crofab is only made in sheep. Sheep have a natural, uh, my God, sheep have a natural immunity to pit viper venom. The anti-venom you would take if you got bit by a rattler was made where? Inside of a sheep, bless God. Mm. The sheep are being bred for the contents of their blood. Naturally produced cures for snake bites, scorpion stings, and drug overdoses is made within the sheep. The anti-venom that you would take if you got bit by a rattler was made where? Inside of a sheep. Naturally produced cures. Let me say it again. For snake bites, scorpion stings, and drug overdoses are produced inside of a sheep. It's in the blood. And what should make you holler when I talk about that the antivenom for snake bites and scorpion stings and drug overdoses is made within the sheep because people, if that sounds familiar to you, bless God, it's because when you look at Luke 10, 19, and I'm just trying to hold it together, Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power to trample, to crush, to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means will ever hurt you. It's in his blood. What I wanted to get out to you tonight is not just for you not to be naked, but to understand everything that we could possibly be uh, be up against. Jesus said, I got you. I got you. Isn't it ironic? It's not a horse. It is not a goat. It is not a lion. It is inside of a sheep. The Lord is our shepherd. It is inside of a sheep. Sheep, some sheep have natural immunity against pit viper venom. Bless God. And if ever we get bit by a snake, by a scorpion, over all the power of the enemy, what is drug overdoses? What is poverty? What is anemia? What is diabetes? What is all of this stuff? The power of the enemy, nothing will hurt you, Tony. Willa, Ken, Alice, Victoria, nothing is going to hurt you. If Jesus thought that much, did you know that sheep have a natural immunity to scorpion, uh, to, to pit viper bites? I had no idea till I looked this up that we get our anti-venom from sheep made inside their body. It is in his blood, bless God. When I found that, I just, I lost it. I really did. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. It's in his blood, bless God. That's where we get our help from. It's in his blood. Let me ask you, if you're not born again, have you had enough yet of living this life on your own? Because I won't ask you, have you ever accepted Jesus, because if you're not born again, the answer is no, you never have. So let me lead you into a prayer and get you born again so that you can be covered by the blood of the lamb, by Jesus, and spend eternity with your creator. Imagine that. Don't you want to spend eternity with the one who created you? If you're ready, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I repent of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept the price you paid for my freedom. 
your death on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead and I am forgiven of my sins. My name is written in the book of life and I am rapture ready. In Jesus name, amen, amen, amen. Oh Lord Jesus, if you prayed that prayer, we believe you have gotten born again. We know you've gotten born again. And I just wanna tell you, welcome home. Welcome home. The Lord, we, we missed you. You have a family now. You are part of a church, which is called the body of Christ. So we thank God for you. Now, don't turn off yet. Let me just go ahead and also, let me bless you. Even though, hey, you're already blessed, but if you're new to this, the Lord gave me, a, uh, he had told me to start blessing uh, the teaching and everybody who would come after I got done teaching. So after I get done, I always pronounce this blessing over everybody. And you don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to stand up. Just stay right where you are. If you're driving, just keep driving, you know, but don't close your eyes. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. In the morning, in the evening, in your coming and in your going, in your weeping and in your rejoicing, because the Lord is for you. So I thank God for you. I bless you in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray us on out of here. Father, I thank you for a wonderful teaching, Lord. Lord, I thank you because it was all for you and about you and to you, Lord Jesus, for the glory of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray over every household represented here, Lord, the ones that are here and the ones who will be watching us later. Father, I pray for our nation. I pray for a revival in this world, a Jesus Christ revival like never before, Lord. I welcome you back into this world, Father. You're omnipresent. Therefore, Jesus, you never left in the first place. You've always been here. So, Lord, I welcome a revival. I'm depending on you, Lord Jesus, for this revival. And Lord, I pray that everyone that's watching, including me, that we are included in this revival. Use us, Lord. However you see fit, Lord Jesus, let us be used to proclaim your name. Let your name be great and let your name be glorified and let your name, Father, be edified all over the four corners of this earth, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you and honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, yeah, Sister Alice, thank you, God. Amen. Okay, everybody. Well, hey, God bless you. Uh, we'll either see you next Monday. I'll see if I, if the Lord tells me otherwise. If not, if, if we're not going on, I'll let you know. But bless God, I couldn't wait to get this message out there to you. So you know what? Nothing shall by any means hurt you. God got us, y'all. He's got us. Hey there, Sister Valerie. All right. All right. All right. God bless you too, Sister Valerie. So, hey, everybody, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this message. And uh, I just thank God. I, I thank God. I, I'm, I'm still pumped because I had no idea about sheep and about the, the anti-venom. And, and that, that's just, it, it's going to always kind of uplift me. So, hey, I'll let you guys go. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. Take care. We'll see you next week. God bless. <laughs>